Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's video is going to be a lawn form platform pop up with this on the beach scene, which is special because something moves. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so this is a bit of a process. So because it is a little bit of a process, I have pre-done some things. Everywhere I have pre-done something, I'm gonna show you how I did it. So don't stress. So I started off with, I'm going to start off with my base, which needs to be my, my island or my beach, for want of a better word. So I have two pieces of these. These are the platform pop-up kind of main die piece. Just cut out a plain white cardstock. This is the, I use the quill stuff that I get from Officeworks, but any kind of, any kind of cardstock that will blend for you is, is fine. So I'm going to start with just one. We'll start off, I'm using my station because I, I can, but you don't really need, it's, it's just as long as you can get a surface that you can ink on. Most of the other inking I have pre-done, but I wanted to do this one with you guys, just so it's all together. So I'm going to use antique linen, which to me is the closest to sand that I have. Well, I have all of them, so the closest to sand, or at least the closest to sand that I want. And the cool thing about sand is it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be a beautifully, wonderful, smooth blend. It can be a bit messy and we're going to add a lot of um, detail and distressing to this in a minute to kind of make it look sandy or make it look properly sandy. So there'll be lots of detail to this one. So the only part of this whole card that I am nervous about, I'm really comfortable with the platform pop-up I've now made, this is number four, um, I have made plenty. The, the part of me that is nervous is because I want to try an interactive element with this and I don't know if it's going to work. I want to try because it's been in my head ever since I got the platform pop-up and then I finished my collection with the... The on the beach dies which I got the other week um, I just I need to try this and if it works that's fantastic if it doesn't the platform pop-up itself is still going to look pretty cool so I think I'm okay so I'm just gonna go ahead really quickly and do the other one of these so you guys don't need to see me do both and then we'll come back and make it all sandy all right so we've got our two sandy bases and then to add all the detail here going to come in with a little bit of oxide a little bit actually a little bit of oxide a little bit of ink and a little bit of water so like I said I want this to be very details not the right word but I want it to look as realistic as sand as I possibly can so we're going to spritz it with water first so that's sort of going to be our first layer of distress so now we've gone from a nice smooth sandy beach to a bit of texture and I'm just looking at that thinking that might be a little bit too much water. Alright, I'm always just add a little bit more over the top. There we go, that one's fine. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of Distress Oxide Splatter in the Antique Linen and the Distress Ink Spray in the Antique Linen. Now, they will give me different kind of looks, so you'll see here in a second. And I'll do zoom zoom so you can see right up close. My Distress Oxide is going to give me a very powdery look when it's dry, whereas my Distress Ink will give me a bit more saturation. So I'm just knocking that all over. I find the Distress Oxide gives me, it's a little bit less obvious, it's, mu it's much subtler, that's the word I was looking for. You know sometimes you have a word sitting right there and you just can't get it off your just can't get it and then for the ink you'll see this in a minute it's just a different it's hard to tell when they're both wet but when they're dry it'll make a lot of it'll look different I hope I always see it think it looks different I'm hoping that you guys see it and don't think I'm just mad which I am but that's a whole different story all right so I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool because I want it dry before I move on to the next layer of sand so I'm just gonna hit this quickly and hopefully then you'll be able to see the difference it is really hard to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say maybe I'm a little wrong with the splatters. I can tell, I can tell a difference, but it is very subtle. So it does come down to sort of what you, 
want to do I find the the distress oxide ones which are kind of these ones up here and again I'll, I'll put in a zoom of the ones that I'm talking about so you guys can kind of see it they're just a little bit more subtle than these kind of ones over this side that are a bit more obvious and it's I'm probably going way over the top but anyway we're done now. so then I'm gonna come in with some more ink this is ground espresso and uh, walnut stain and I'm also just going to grab a little bit of white this is watercolor paint any kind of paint that's white will do it's just uh, we're going to add some light textures to this as well so I'm going to start off with that walnut stain I'm staying very far up because I don't want these to be big splatters I want them to be little splatters and I don't want to go too over the top with the really really dark one just a little bit and then we'll come in to that walnut stain, which is the lighter one, and do the same thing. Again, staying up high, because I just want little splatters. If you have trouble staying really up high because you worry about the ink going everywhere, um, grab yourself a splatter box, that's probably the easiest way. Um, otherwise, if you flick it off a acrylic block, that'll do the same, get you the same little, little flicks. And then I'm coming into that paint. I left it for last because I want it to stay white if I can. And then this one will always, because it's a bit thicker, won't flick quite as nicely. So if you can't get it to flick the way you want it to, just grab yourself that acrylic block like I said and you can flick off the edge. I'll actually do that. Need a little bit more. I don't mind making a mess everywhere, <laughs> so I'm okay with this. But if you are worried about making a mess, I would suggest a splatter box. All right, they are our backgrounds done, or our box done. I'm gonna sort of pick these up and just move them off and let them dry for a little bit. I don't want to make too much of a mess. The other thing I need to do, which I've just realized and I've, that I've forgotten, but anyway, it's okay. I have another piece of cardstock here. I just need to cut, I need to ink this up exactly the same way as I just did the, the backgrounds because I need them for the, um, where the, where the critters are going to sit. So I'm just going to really quickly do that exactly the same way as I just did and cut them out and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my little hillsides all cut. I also have all of my little T-shapes to make my platform pop up. And I also have all of my little pieces to make my to make my scene. So they're all there. I also have that these ones have been pre-inked. I have a um, I've just realized oh no, that is the right way. Heart attack. I thought I'd done it the wrong way. Um, I have some waves to go on the bottom of my box. So they are there. And I also have my background here that I've done. This is all with uh, Mermaid Lagoon and Salty Ocean. And this is with Mermaid Lagoon, Salty Ocean and tumbled glass so they're my main parts for this platform pop up so from here let's start working on our actual box I'm just gonna pick up any it's just the paint that's not dry now everything else is fine so I'm just gonna dab off any of that excess paint Shush. and I always try and dab rather than drag so that if I there is a little bit of something I don't kind of ruin my aesthetic. I think that looks like sand. I'm happy. All right, so to make the actual platform. So we've got our little die. So if you sort of imagine it, actually, I'll show you another one. This is one that I made for Charlotte for her birthday. So this bit here, so there's two bits. So that's the two. And then when you fold it down, it'll be flat. And then when you pop it up, it'll be like a, like a platform, exactly what it says. Um, it isn't, it looks complicated. Seriously, it is so, so, so simple. Just grabbing my score tool. So, you're going to score at all of the lines. These are all there for you already. Lawn Fawn has already done all of the hard work. So, you really just need to find the lines and then just score or just fold along them. You don't have to reinforce them, I just, I prefer to. There's your second one. So you can sort of start seeing the shape here. It starts to make sense. So that's your box. 
and then this bit is the, the sort of platform. Now this one, there we go. Okay, so all of my lines are now scored, and you can sort of see this is your your box shape. So it's it it's really that simple. And then all you have to do is just put in this little background piece. So this one has a little score tab on it as well. So I'm just folding that over. Then what you do, there's my front, so it's the front. Poke this in this little bit here, make it flush. So you sort of pull it through to the point that it's flush. Because you want this to be as solid as it can be. Grab yourself a little bit of double-sided tape. I find double-sided tape works better here. Glue tape will work, but it's not as strong. So double-sided is better. Pop that on your little tab piece. Whoops, I was going to say good reinforcement but the bit came off. And then what we do, again pull it taut, make sure it's exactly where you want it, fold this over and then press. So then when you open it, it stays still. So you can sort of see it's got that little T bit there. And then you can go ahead and basically put it together. So it's, it's so simple to do that. So I, again, like to use, it's not regular tape, that's foam tape. I like to use double-sided tape for this. So I've just got, this is my expressor tape. It's not my thinnest one. I have another one, but this one fits really nicely on here. So you just put that there. I'm also going to put a little bit on this tab on the side. So then we can remove the release paper and basically just fold it and press it. And that folding and pressing gives you your little box shape. Ta da! And then when we get to it in a minute, we can add in. Um, we can add the other piece on. That's why I've already got that tape there. Now the other way that you can, not other way you can do this, but you can put these on first because these fit, these little sandy banks fit perfectly on here. This is something that I found. I like to just trim my tee off just a little bit because that way it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it accidentally popping up. I might need to get my super skinny. Yes, I will. It's here somewhere. Is. So this is my super skinny um, double sided tape. Place that along my tab bit. Get rid of the dog hair. Remove release papers. Stick down Sandy Bank. It's really that. It really is that easy. It's not any more complicated than that. And in a second, when I fold this up, you see that that, plat, that sandy bank sits there perfectly. So you can just see that bit. And that's what we're going to stick all of our images to. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I'm going to do it with you so that we can sort of learn them together. Highly recommend going and checking out the Lawn Fawn intro video. I'll link it down below. Plus, there are about a billion about a billion um, videos at the moment for platform pop-ups all over YouTube. They are all the rage. If you haven't seen them somewhere already, I'd be really surprised. I feel like I said, I've made four and I love them. They're just, they're so much fun and they just are such a different kind of card. It's something you don't see all the time. I certainly haven't seen anything like this platform. I've seen box cards, which work, and I've made box cards and I love them, but there's something about this platform. It's really cool. So all your score lines done. We'll grab in one of the T's. There it is. I'm actually going to do the... Now, this one's my clever one. So I need to, before I put this all 
together. Yes, I do. I need to think about it. So I'm going to put the, I have a piece of acetate here. Now this is just my normal acetate. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a bit dirty, but that's okay. And I'm just going to trim off. I want this to sit no higher than my background piece. So I'm just having a look at the size here. I've cut this to be about as wide as the T, but I can trim it off in a minute. So I'm going to trim that to be a little bit lower. I'm trying not to cut right now. I know I've got that in the wrong spot, but that's okay. So that's about how tall it is. I'm grabbing the acetate bit. Just trim that off. Okay. So that's my little background bit for this. I'm going to need to trim it a little bit more. I figured I would. So I'm just making it a little bit less wide. Now what I want to do, because I've kind of been alluding to it but haven't actually explained what I'm trying to do. I want it to sit at the back. So that's your back. I want it to sit back here. And I want it then to be able to, actually is it the back or the middle? No, it's not. It's the middle one that I want it to sit on. So that's, that's fine. That's even easier. The middle one doesn't need to be poked anywhere. And I want to put one of the slide on over dies on there. And I want to make it so the ball can move from side to side. That's my thinking. I don't know if this is going to work. I actually, I'm looking at my slide on overs and I actually think they're all going to be too big. I'm going to have to cut. Oh, no, hold on. No, it is going to fit. It's just going to be really close. Okay. Now, things I know. Hold on, I don't know if you guys can even see where the edge of the acetate is there. The things I know about my acetate is that they don't often cut nicely <laughs> with my dice. So I'm going to try knowing that there's a really good chance that this won't actually... I was trying to reuse washi tape. Um, it might not actually work. It may not fit. It may not cut. There's lots of things here that may go wrong. But I'm going to try because... I like experimenting and seeing if things work. If anyone has a tip for getting acetate to cut through in a dye machine, please let me know. My only tips are go back and forth, go back and forth, go back and forth until it cuts through. And if it really isn't cutting through, add a shim, which I might do in a second. Yeah, so it quite hasn't quite made its way through. So this is an extra bit of... Um, white cardstock. I'm just cutting it down to be, now yeah, it's too thin, but anyway. What else do I have here on my desk? I'll just run this through, see how it goes. I don't think that's going to be wide enough, but anyway. Run that through a couple of times. It has almost cut all the way through. So I'm going to take off the tape and just get my scissors in here. Like I said, it's, it's almost through. It's, it's so very close. So I'm just using my scissors just to follow that around until the spot that it's, it has come loose. There we go. The part I'm worried about is the part closest to the edge. I don't want to tear the acetate because as ridiculously strong as this stuff is and doesn't want to cut um, it can tear edges very easily especially when you're as close to the edge as I am because that's really close okay so there's my little acetate piece I feel like you're not going to be able to see that but just trust me it's there and then to get the ball part you guys remember a couple of weeks ago I bought those little um, replenishments from my favorite things from dawn I'm gonna give them a try because I want this ball to spin that's gonna be the, like not the coolest part about it but a very cool part about it so there's my little replenishment I'm grabbing my mini glue dots which normally I only use for doing um, magic iris cards but apparently are just the right size to fit on my little replenishment so I'm picking one of the dots up and then the way you're supposed to do this 
is use two smaller things than your little die that you want to move. Please don't, thank you. So what I've done is I've grabbed, this is one of my, oh, this is my only hole punch, not hole punch, um, shape punch that I own. But I think these circles are smaller. They are. So I'm going to attach that replenishment to the back of one of those circles, preferably in the middle, not like I just did off to the side. It's close. And then we attach that to the ball with a little bit of glue. I'm going oh, to do this one, so it doesn't really matter, either side. So you attach this bit to the ball. You could not put the second one on there and just attach it straight to the back. I just want an extra bit of, because this is a 3D card, it's going to sit up. I want it to be able to move and do what it needs to do. So I'm going to put that on here. I'm going to grab the other the glue dot for the other end. I love that these glue dots fit perfectly. It's just it makes me happy. And pull. And then I might need some tweezers for this. And then I'm just placing that down in between so it's not hitting the little the edge. And then it'll spin. It'll, it definitely slides, but it should also spin. That's really cool. Oh, that's awesome. And because it's plastic, this is the problem that I have, I guess, because we use, I tend to use paper and paper gets stuck. It's not perfect. It is not a 100% going to spin exactly the, as freely as I think I thought it was going to, but it definitely does spin and it definitely does move. You just need to wiggle it a little bit. Just try to make it as flat as I can. There we go. So if that sits in the middle, and then I have my little critters, one's going to sit behind and one's going to sit in front going to look like they're throwing the ball between them as they're laying on their little things. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm actually really excited. This is, I think this actually will work. All right, so I need my little tea piece that I had before and I'm going to stick this down to it. So using that um, double-sided tape, the really thin one, I'm trying to cut it to the right size. Now the one that goes in the middle, the tab that goes in the middle, you don't need to uh, fold the little tab because it just sticks. So that makes it a bit easier. So I'm sticking the acetate on here first and then I can stick the hill over the top. The only part about this that I am mildly worried about is if that ball is high enough but I think I think it'll be fine actually let's go ahead really quickly and put the back together because I can pull that acetate up if I need to so same way we did the first one grab the other one of the other little tees there it is and fold his tab that double-sided tape. Now the only difference this for the back one is that I'm spinning the tab the other way so the other time I would have put it in with the nice edge facing the front this time I'm putting the nice edge facing I'm still putting the nice edge facing the front but it's the other way it doesn't matter you can't really see it you, you won't see it anyway but it's just the way I like it stuck that down when you pull it up it's going to go vertical all right so box number two we'll put that sand bank on there too now i should have done it first i always forget okay so we've got our little sand bank 
and you can see the way this is going to start coming together just like that. So you've got two little sandbanks there. Start. Why am I scared that I've done this wrong? I haven't, I don't think. No, I haven't. It needs to be back, back to front because it needs to fold back around behind itself. Oh, goodness me. Now, before I put this together, this is where we're going to put some of these ocean details on. So these ones have been cut from the bottom of the box. So you'll be able to see sort of when I line it up that they do fit perfectly. If they don't, because this is another piece of cardstock on top of a piece of cardstock and sometimes that doesn't work very well. You can just cut them apart and stick them that way because they'll line up when you fold the box open. So it's just a whichever personal preference you want to do. I'm going to cut the bit off with the tab because I don't need it and it's going to get in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down. Just using glue tape for this one. Um, adhesive, uh, liquid adhesive would work or you can use more double sided tape. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just making sure I start in the middle here so that I can line them up together. So I can see that's hitting my score lines really nicely. That one's a bit low. There we go. So we've got our little sort of ocean scene happening there. You can see it fits rather nicely. Doesn't look out of place. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. So again, just cutting the tab off. Now, the only thing I've just realized I didn't do was make sure that these line up with each other, but eh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Actually. Now I'm gonna be clever. I'm gonna I'm gonna just trim this down. So the good thing about this border is I can actually trim it down to be whatever height I want. So I'm just lining those up, grabbing a pen. This is just the only pen I have on my desk, so it doesn't matter. And then I'll just use my trimmer to trim that line so it's straight. tape all around all on the outside I forgot to fold so I'm just going to do that now it's just a gentle fold anyway so it's not so bad and then we'll line these up there we go and then we've got a little oceany part I'm just giving it a really good rub on that bend because I want it as much as it can kind of not look like a gap. There will be a bit of a gap, but not horrible. I'm going to push those down and then I can pull off the release paper here and push this together, which will make the whole box. Oh, hold on. Wait, before I do that, I'm going to do this bit, don't I? I nearly forgot. So put a little bit more of that tape down first. So we'll put our sandbank so that hides it. The sandbanks can be changed sizes as well. Like if you don't want this to sit quite up as high, just do what I did with the the border of the ocean. You just drag it down or just cut it down just a little bit. And because it's going to be hidden, if it's not straight, it's actually okay. It's just a little bit too high. And I know the back one's going to be high anyway, but no, I don't need to. I'm being pedantic. So I'm just lining up that sandbank. There we go. And then this one. You cut off the bottom tab and then you can just put glue whether it's adhesive um, double-sided adhesive or glue tape doesn't really matter I should have done double-sided but anyway it's done now and then I just line that up with the sandbank behind it and then you can push these together just not quite lining up because I'm being careful of that ball. So I just line those two up together so that the bottom's flat and then I'll come back and do the tab. There you go. And there we have 
our whoops what did I do I put that sandbank in back to front that's okay I just put the sandbank in back to front easy to fix just pull that apart I forgot which way my sand was facing just for a minute there I thought I'd done the whole thing wrong but I haven't I'm also just going to put a little bit more tape on the back there just to put it all back together there we go and we can do the same thing again with our little ocean there we go now you pop it up and you've got that perfect sandbank oh and I love the bowl that's so cool okay there we go so from there we can start putting the background together you don't need to do the background I got the add-on because I will get everything um, and I really like the add-ons. I haven't actually made one yet without the add-ons. I just think they, the background just gives it a something. It just gives it a something and it just, it adds some detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that skinny tape right along the edge of this one. So yes, it goes on the back. I had to think about that for a sec. And this also then hides the fact that there's, it's just white on those scallops at the back it's just a nice like I said it's a nice finishing detail it is not required this would look still really cool whether it's got that or not but I kind of like it so tape off and this fits in so easily it's seriously just a pop and a pop and it slides in perfectly she says is it doesn't there we go and then I just like to push it on the end on the back that's just because we've got the ball it's just a slightly bumpier surface than it should be there we go so you can see we've got our little set up there and the ball slides back back and forth I am disappointed that it's not spinning the way I wanted it to but it is doing what I want it the more I'm looking at it though, the more I'm thinking it probably should go at the back. Anyway, we'll fix it up in a second if that's where it needs to go. So I have cut these little um, towels. I'm just trying to think if the towels are actually going to work or if they're not. I wasn't sure, so I figured it's better to cut them than not cut them. And because I was going to have the little... This is hard for you guys to see because it's working in a 3D environment and you guys aren't in a 3D environment right now, but that's okay. So you can sort of see the, the bear and the fox will pass the ball to each other. I have the umbrella as well, which I'm gonna put the umbrella behind the ball. I might cut it down a little bit, it's a bit high. Actually, I'm gonna stick it right at the back there and it can just, it'll just sit up. So it'll sit at, Oh, making this look really complicated. It's really not. It's just a, you're working in a 3D environment and if you're like me, you're very used to working in a 2D environment, which is slightly different. So I'm just gonna put a bit of glue tape on the back of the bear, the back of the fox. I'm also just gonna trim down my umbrella a little bit and put some on the base of the umbrella. So for the umbrella, I'm gonna put that on that back tab in the middle because that way it doesn't detract from the ball because the ball's going to float sort of in right in front of it okay i'm just thinking i maybe should bring the ball down so we've got the the fox and the little bear are sitting there on their nice little sandy banks and they're having I think the ball needs to come down so again doable let's just pull our little sand bank off and pull our acetate off our tab so I'm just pulling gently because I don't want that tab to break the tab needs to stay you 
you can if you want to. You could not use the tab there and just use the acetate and it would work. The tab is not required, but I think it's easier. So I'm going to cut that down. I'm going to cut about three quarters of an inch off that. And then we'll just put it back together. So the line of tape at the back. I'm actually going to do one other little thing while I've got it out. So there's a line of tape at the front for the um, sand bank and then there's going to be a line of tape at the back to stick it to the actual T-shape. And I'm just going to grab some scissors and I just, I just want to make it so that this top part isn't quite so obviously square. So I still need it to be there but now it doesn't have quite so much um, hanging at the top. Alright, so then we're going to pop that. You can either pop it up or down. It does pop up, you just need to manipulate it. There we go. I find up is helpful for getting stuff back on the tees when you need to. So we'll take the one at the back first. I like it better already. That It's just a little bit lower. Because it looks more now like the the bear and the fox are kind of throwing it at each other. I could even come down lower again. Let's just have a look before we get happy. No, that's perfect. That's the right height. <laughs> it's still cute. Go, there we go. The more you play with this, the smoother it will get. So that's my advice. If you sort of look at, if you're feeling it and you're going, it doesn't move nicely, just play with it. It'll fix it. And then we'll put that sandbank back in. And then I do have, I bought, I grabbed one of the little um, drinks. I'm just going to put that on the on the back here in that middle one because that middle one's actually not holding anything now it just looks like the drinks just sort of sitting behind the fire uh, you can't really see it camera there we go just move it so it looks like it's sitting just behind the fox a little bit that is so cute and it is now that we're going the ball is starting to spin you can sort of see it is spinning a little bit easier now that it's in its spot and it it just Oh my goodness! You know when you have something in your head and you think, oh, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work, and then it does, and it's just like, yes. So you see then, it'll come in the mail just like that, and you'll pop it up, and you'll get that cute little scene. The only thing we still need to kind of add is just some kind of a sentiment. I do still have the rainbow kind of towels. Oh. Oh, does that fit? I think I'm being too clever here, but I'm going to try this. So I'm just cutting. It's just a straight line. I don't, I'm not cutting all the way. I'm cutting three quarters of it. And it's just between the red and the orange. And I'm just wondering if I can slide that so it sits flat. It may not work, and if it doesn't, that's fine. <gasps> it does. It's gonna fit. All right, the only thing I'll need to do is just cut off a little corner of it. But why not? So that way it'll actually look like the little fox is sitting on the towel. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. So I'm just going to pull that off. This one might be a, a liquid glue kind of thing. So I'm just going to trim that off because we might need the extra time to wiggle it around. So. It's, it's 
very much a, a detail you only see when you sort of put it up or down but it's very cool and I am going to do the same thing for the bear at the back he's going to be a bit more complicated because he is sitting he's sitting behind the little tab bit actually for him I'm just going to lay it down. There's actually just enough room for that on its own. So I'm going to lay it down, but I'm laying it down the other way so that the, the red's at the back so you can see it a little bit more. So his tail looks slightly different to his foxy friends here. Whoops. Don't go away. I need you to stay up. I might just bend stuff out of the way. It'll move. And if you use the, to sort of push that into place, you can just use the platform. So again, it's a detail that you can only really see from the top, but it's kind of cool. The only thing I'm still a bit, an not annoyed, I just feel like the umbrella's in the wrong spot. So I'm just grabbing that. Because I put it on with glue dots, it's got, it's still got some time to do its thing. Just moving it a little bit over to the left. Now it just doesn't look, now it sort of looks a bit more normal. Okay, so we still just need the sentiment. That's the last thing. This has to be a birthday card. It's just too happy to not be a birthday card. So, where do we put the sentiment? I feel like it needs to sit at the front. It needs to just be a a little sort of thing here. So used all the rainbow. I'm just trying to decide what colour to do it in. I'm gonna grab this is actually a bit of my blending card. Just a little scrap. Just cut this bit loose. So I just want to use this, and we'll cut out the little square. The cool thing about this die set is it also comes. Oh, that's what I need to do. It does also come with a couple of extra bits and pieces for de decorating the actual box. So just keep that in mind. It's not just. It's not just the actual platform. The other thing that is in here that I'm going to grab though, which I've just remembered, is that the add-on comes with a little sun. So I'm just going to grab that sun and cut that out as well. Again, out of this blending card, because I'm going to use um, some Copics to color it. Oops. is looking just a little bit empty so we'll fix that so for the Sun I've got all the colors of Copics that I use just off to the side so that I can work them all out I'm gonna color it in in my lightest yellow which is this YR uh, sorry the Y08 acid yellow I'm just coloring in the entire Sun it doesn't have to be perfect because it'll blend into the background anyway and then coming in with Y15, which is cadmium yellow, just going around the outside. I missed a couple of spots, so I'm just fixing that up. And then just a little bit of orange. I never know with the sunshine to do the orange around the outside or the inside. The outside. So I'm just going to colour in all of the little uh, spiky bits orange. Uh, and this is YR04 uh, chrome orange. You could put a sun. Put a smiley face in here too if you're so inclined you could also put clouds in the sky because there are clouds in my background i couldn't just have a plain white plain blue sky that's just silly uh, to do the background just fyi i just use the the stencils the cloudy stencil and the uh, ocean stencil and the ocean stencil very cleverly um, matches the the ocean wave dies which i think is really cool 
just smoothing out the edge because I messed it up. There we go. So if I stick that in the background there, that'll be perfect. There we go. So now it looks like they've got a beautiful, bright, summery day. And then for the little bit at the front here. So I've, I have got, I used seven colours for the, um, seven colours for the towels, but for all the others I've basically just used five. Oh, though I did bring in the, right. So I'm just going to grab my main rainbow colours. So I've got my six. And I'm just going to do these as a bit of a, a stripe. So we'll start with the red. I'm actually going to use the chisel end which I don't use particularly often and just chisel down there now I know that this is that I need six so hold on let's get the markings here so that's the halfway point the cool thing is this is two inches so I can see where the halfway point is so I know I need to fit three colors in this little bit Come back in with the redness and it blend a bit better. Whoops. So used to using the if you work with them just blending them together, rainbow is hard. Rainbow is always hard for Copics, but if you just sort of work them, you can get it to do a blend. Come back in with the red. Let me go back over with the orange won't be perfectly smooth it won't be a lovely gradient kind of thing but it will do what it's doing now which is giving me a bit of that gradient and then we'll come in with the green I kind of like that when you put them together you get some different kind of colors I should have gone the other way but anyway right two seconds I need to fix this because I a, have another idea and B reckon I can do it better so I'm going to do this really quickly off camera and I'll be right back to show you the finish. All right, so I've cut that, colored that in. What I did was I washi taped off the background so that I could give it a bit of a white border. The white border is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it just gives it something. It just was missing a, um, missing something bold. So I've just put a bit of white on there. So a little bit of tape on there and it looks much better now that it's, horizontal instead of vertical and I just used this is the one of the sentiments out of the actual stamp set this on the beach one and then I just used some um, VersaFine Onyx Black because I, I knew I wasn't colouring over the top so I could. So there you have it we have our little on the beach set up oh my God. with the bowl that moves so you put that in together you sit your little get out of the envelope and it sits like this, you can see your little sunshine and your little relax, it's your birthday. And then you pop it up and you have this gorgeous little scene, which when you roll the ball, or when you move it from side to side, the ball moves and will spin. It will spin. It just, it's pecky, but you can see it does spin. And it looks, looks so cool when it spins. Um, I may, I may, may, may have to do another card using that spinning ball because that's just absolutely gorgeous so there we go that's my first on camera platform pop up I love these cards I have been absolutely in love like I said this was the one I did for Charlotte's birthday you can see it's a very similar kind of thing with that big acetate thing for the cloud at the back that one is a little high like there's some things I could do to this one this was the very first one I ever made but then I've done two others which you'll see on my Instagram in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned to that if you do want to see them I want to say a big thank you to everybody who voted on my poll. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I have so many ideas and I don't know which one you guys want to see first, so I'll chuck up a bunch. Thank you to you guys who voted for this one. I hope it did what you thought I was going to do justice. Uh, and make sure you follow me over on IG in case you want to vote in future polls. If you want to see more platform pop-ups, please let me know. If you want to see more interactive cards, please let me know. Uh, you can do it down below or, of course, on any of my socials. And give this one a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your day and a great week and I'll catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye!